now. Mariana, can you come? <laughs> Mariana Sharolic Robic, uh, Crow Startup Vice President. She's our last speaker. Mariana worked as a legal advisor in one of the Croatian banks and was promoted to head of loans in retail. After that, she worked in the law industry as, as banking and finance lawyer and equally partner equity partner in one of the biggest Croatian law firms. In 2013, she started her own law office and entered the startup world as a mentor of over 100 startups. Her topic for today is why should data sets care about privacy, rule of law and human rights at all? The EU has been actively working on the digital decade. We have just entered for years now. Data sets are the backbone of the, that strategy. Why it is relevant for data sci scientists to actively participate and track all laws and policies in what field and how they can benefit from such perspective shall be presentation focus. Mariana, thank you. Sorry. So, I'm really happy that Emmanuel was before me because uh, he gave the right intro. I share most of his views and you will realize that we all share most of our views because we are in this part of industry. The story that I'm going to talk about today is why should you even care about rule of law, human rights and what is the relevance for you? And it's always like in life, it's about the perspective. So I thought that I'm going to have a lecture after the lunch. So I wanted to have a video that will make you, you know, wake up, but this is good as after the lunch. So we'll play a short video. Yeah, remember it's about perspective. Why did I start with the video? Because you all here work with data and you're thinking about single piece of data. You're thinking about data sets, you're thinking about how to structure them, how not to, how to use unstructured data, how to label them in order to train them to achieve whatever you're supposed to achieve for your products, for your services, for your end goal, or even you just want to play with them in order to whatever, do whatever you desire. The thing about data and how it is relevant to AI made in Europe is that all those uh, things that you do daily, all those data that you work with, uh, all your daily tasks basically have to be framed within the jurisdiction of the country you are part of. And we are part
the more uh, the more you are aware of it, it will be easier for you to meet the, the to, to change the perspective and to meet the criteria, or even to address and, and not maybe mitigate all the risks and requirements they, they want from us. But moreover, will you will be able to, um, I would say, um, step in to the battle and, and contribute, because we really need everybody in this game. Otherwise, it won't end up good for us as European Union and Croatia being part of it too. So there is Croatian Artificial Association. You can join us. There is also AI Alliance, really huge number of private companies, academia, uh, unions, uh, general public is, is being there. And no, just be aware that uh, Brussels is just politics. So we are citizens. If we put enough pressure as companies, as individuals to it, they will change the dynamics. We have power. And this is something that we have to use and we have to say that we are not satisfied with, with what they are presenting and we want things to change. So this is my final uh, slide and I'm open for question. Thank you. Does anyone, anyone have a question? Emmanuel? Awful, 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 awful. The only good thing is preamble, <coughs> like in any other um, EU legislation, and then you don't see it in, in the final clauses in them. Because you have this intention, it has encompasses everything that it should be there, and then when you have it basically written down, it's, it's insufficient. In, and uh, I'm basically working as um, one of the members of the working body for the Machinery Act, and I can see how on EU level, it's basically all about what Germany says, what France says, what is good interest for Portuguese companies, why is Belgium silent, and you can see that we as European Union are dealing with something that we are not aware as 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 a as, as a community that is going to change our uh, 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 and we are still playing you know like a small shopkeepers on a corner we are not thinking about one th that we are one territory one market single market and that we are basically shooting ourselves in the leg as as, as a, a market economy trying to, as you said, to, to, to impose our standards to others, and we don't even know whether those standards are any more standards of us Europeans, because they were drafted after the Second World War War. And we are not sure whether those values are values of Europe today. And are they even relevant for artificial intelligence or any other technology? Because technology is just a medium, it's a channel, it's not us. And this is really, really super scary, because politicians don't want to go there. It's too... It's too waste. It, 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 it leaves people think and rethink, and this is not good because you can't put your agenda through it. Just, I read an article in Wired. It was about how Google was basically lobbying to uh, get himself out of the definition of artificial intelligence, and they were basically drafting that in order to, you know, tame the big beasts of Google, Amazon, and, and it's crazy because if they escape by lobbying who is going to meet the criteria? You know, small SMEs, meaning 90% of, of uh, European Union companies. And it's, it's a nightmare, basically. Please do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that we still have stuff in it, and I think it could be a lot of like bias and discrimination that we are okay. And the fact that like I think actually people do need to question the legal process and like the system that they are in because it's like it's not just people on the outside that could do it. It's like it's well, I always go a, a step back. We are living in a perfect moment in history. Never before knowledge was one click away and free. For everybody. You, even if you can't read in a language, 
the, 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 the text, whatever the, the knowledge is written in, you can Google translate it or use any other tool for translation. So, because the, the reason uh, we are not dealing with discussions, first of all, I think because we are not learned and taught to discuss and to listen to one another, you know, to, 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 it's all about going one step back and seeing first taking the tools, the knowledge, and also listening, learning, then learning how to discuss, how to argument, and then another step when we learn that, what we want to do with this world, what, what is it for us? Because as I said, artificial intelligence is just a technology. I know it's super powerful, but only if those predictions come true. We all know that we are not yet there, but it's, it's terrifying. And it's terrifying if algorithm is being used and uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not gender blind and that all may get in. But the thing is, we have to be forgiving. We have to you know, notify one another and we will tweak it. We'll, in the next iteration, it will be better because we are humans. We are learning by walking. We don't know how to walk when we are born. And for some strange reasons, we want technology to be perfect. I don't know why. And we know the technology is not perfect because we users will basically make it perfect is if we adopt it. And this is the part that you do as a data scientist, as a UX designers, whatever. But basically it's all about collaboration and what we want as human beings for this society. It's not about regulation. Regulation is just a framework. And doing the regulation just because we lost the battle on technology is super stupid for me. So. Yeah, please go ahead. You and then you. Okay, thank you. Basically, we are, we are doing that through the Croatian Artificial Association. Uh, uh, we are trying to put this agenda all over the place. We are trying to talk to our politicians. We are trying to collaborate on EU level to all similar organizations, associations. This is the reason Emanuel came today, because he met Atso, Atso Moncilovic. We are really trying you know, to do th this critical ma mass of people who will share, uh, change the paradigm, who, who will be enough to, to get this uh, afloat and not to have it somewhere be below the surface. So, therefore, you are also important because you can also raise the discussion up. The, the thing is, this is something very interesting because one of the one of the lanes when you are bringing a new law, you have to tell to the legislator what the impact will be on. And it's really, it's going to be really interesting how it will be um, first budgeted, because it's super expensive. You can only see in preamble, you can see how much money we should have as a country, not businesses for compliance, to, to pay all those experts we don't have. They are not eager to learn. They are like technophobes, but literally technophobes. And, and it's really going to be interesting to see how they are going to explain the impact because the common sense says that the law being brought is for the good. It has to bring value to, to stakeholders. And I'm not sure how they are going to explain this in the document following this budgetary uh, document following the uh, AI Act. It's not yet visible, but definitely the impact should be that it should enhance economy, it should preserve the values, it should enable individuals to get more benefits and things like that. I'm not sure, so we'll see. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, one of the, uh, since, since the act has been in the making for the last three years, yeah. how come there's been no opposition towards this act? I mean, as you, as you said, uh, it, it, it could have a clear impact on uh, female competitiveness in the tech sector and this is really uh, weird that nobody opposes this. I would say that people did oppose when they initially, th this is the funny story, you know when I said how it all began uh, spring 2018. When the, the initial AI ethics guidelines were released, there were like around 700 comments on the text itself. 
And the high level expert group actually took all those comments into account because, you know, local academia, private sector, unions uh, really took effort, read and gave comments. And all those comments were basically taken into account. So this, I would say, legislative process was open, but it's not visible in Croatia. The problem is that we do not uh, use our potential as a member state to be part of this, because this AI alliance is still on and you can join. You just register your email as a regular EU citizen. You can do it as your organization, you can do it as a company, and believe me, you can really make a difference. The second story is about influencing our MPs. We have eight of them there. Even Raz Ressler became uh, a vice president of AIDA, that is basically uh, a parliamental body responsible for artificial intelligence. We are trying really through association to push hard about all the benefits and make aware the politicians how we are going to destroy our own economy if we do this, because this is over-regulating and it's not common sense. We understand that they are terrified, but they are terrified because they lack knowledge and not for right reasons. It's not like Terminator is going to come. And, and everything comes down to, to trolley dilemma that it's not real dilemma, but it's click bite. So, no. Any other questions? No, they are free to go. Oh, there is the one in the last row. <laughs> That's right. And what will be actually the implications for some companies that uh, do business on American soil, for instance, and on the European soil, when they, or it would be better for them to use something that is, uh, let's say, legal on the European level, or could be better on the European level, but it is developed in Georgia, America, for instance, and then uh, maybe cooperate with or somehow some elements Yeah. Th just remember GDPR. So basically, it became golden standard of the world. It, it, it's awful, but it became a golden standard. So all other countries replicated it uh, from New Zealand, Australia, America. They took it and made it their privacy act just because they couldn't trade in Europe, in EU. And, and this is something that will probably happen with the AI Act. It will be imposed on us, EU member states, but because we are still old, rich civilization and we still make great share of, of uh, uh, market, global market, it will probably make companies either do all of their R&D for US in US and not even go to, to Europe just because you don't want to be um, reputationally provoked that you did something that is against uh, uh, EU regulation, or they will just give up on, on uh, EU market. And the thing is that they won't stop technology because the citizens will just use it. They will use it through other sources and, and you can't block the internet, you can't block communication, it's, it's stupid. But the final result might be in this I think th the question is how quick they are going to face the circumstances because with GDPR they are just realizing how stupid it is and then they are going to do the amendment and say that some data because they are part of the algorithm can basically not be deleted if somebody asks to, uh, because the, the, the algorithms can be trained and has, have been trained, trained on those data and it's impossible to do it. But this is something that took five years to acknowledge and technology doesn't wait five years. So it's going definitely to be interesting. Uh, companies will, you know, they're resilient, they have grit, they will go to other markets and they will sell products, some other channels, whatever. But the idea is that we will omit chance to really regulate something that is super important and that could really enhance our society and also our economy. And this is stupid. This is just being stupid, us as, as EU or our politicians, but we, elected them, so we are stupid at the end. <laughs> so. Okay, we can finalize this speech. Thank, thank you, Mariana. Thank you. This certificate of appreciation. Thank please. you, thank you, thank you.